afraid to ask. But I've got to. Go away. Stop following me. You're not my keeper. Of course not. I'm just concerned about your health. I don't want your concern. Why don't you lie down? You look very tired. I don't want to lie down. Well, you need to rest. I can't rest. I have to take care of the, the, the skeet shoot and the, and the, and the Halloween party. I, I no, can't. No, Mrs. Wright, you really should take it easy. Mary, I'm fine. Thank you. Well, forgive me for saying this, but you don't look fine. You look tired and weak, and there's no party in the world that's more important than your health. It's all right, Mary. It's just a, a simple thyroid condition, and my medicine will take care of it. But you can't find your medicine, Miss Love. It's around. Mary, this skeet shoot is very important to my father. It is. Of course it is. He's the one who, who, who arranged it. He wants it. Oh, very strange. Why? Well, in Paraguay, he never wanted to give big parties. He didn't? Oh, in fact, you'd have to call him quite reclusive. Wouldn't you say so, Gomez? Oh, well, I know Mr. Love is eager to take his place again as, as a leader of Bay City society. Tell me something, Gomez. Does Mr. Love program you every morning? I beg your pardon? Never mind. It just seems out of character for Reginald, that's all. I don't know what my father's like was in Paraguay. I only know that this Halloween party is extremely important to him. Well, I don't understand it, but it's just another in a long list of things I don't understand. Including you, Donna. Why? Well, you seem to have changed your opinion of your father quite drastically. So? I remember the day I came to the hospital to visit Michael. He said some rather dreadful things about Reginald. I've been sick. I can't be held responsible for what I say. Mrs. Love, didn't you say you needed some help in um, organizing closets? That Gomez, mind like a steel trap. Yes, you're quite right. I did say that. Excuse us. I still think you should lie down, Donna. Michael, I need you. Hello? Hi, Michael. I saw you walking down the path there. Uh, come down and look at the horses? No, I'm just wandering. It's such a gorgeous day. Hmm. And you needed to get out of the house, huh? Sometimes I feel like I just go on overload. I try and do some clear, rational thinking about Reginald. And then my head just starts spinning from all the conflicting stories I get. Well, Mary, I'm sorry if I added to the confusion. You did, you know. You say one thing. Donna says something entirely different. And then, of course, there's... Poor Vince and my children and Father O'Connor. I don't know what to think. Look, you want to uh, sit down? Yeah. Look, you uh, mind if I ask you a question? What? Well, you seem to be a very straightforward, uh, no-nonsense lady with an eye for, for spotting phonies. Yes, well, I always thought I was. How could you live with a man for 17 years and not think that he was keeping something from you? Love is blind. I never bought that. I think that Reginald must have been a very different person in Paraguay. Was he? I don't know if he was different. I know that I loved him very much. And you still do. You're kind of a direct fellow, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Look, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. That's a question that I ask myself over and over. How, after all of the terrible things that have come out, how can I still love this man? And you do. And I feel a sense of loyalty to him. 
I think, Mary, you must be just a very loyal person. I wasn't very loyal to Vince McKinnon, was I? No. Mary, what did Reginald do to deserve your loyalty? The good in him deserves it. Michael, there is good. I've experienced it. Well, I haven't, Mary. I have too many scars to change my opinion. Maybe the subject of Reginald should be off limits for us. I think that's a good idea to deal. I, um, <clears throat> I have a confession. Yeah? What? I didn't just wander down to the stables. No kidding. I was hoping you'd be here. Oh, I'm glad I was. I feel very comfortable with you. Well, that works both ways. There aren't a lot of people I feel comfortable with these days. I think it's very, very strange. Well, you should feel comfortable with your husband's sworn enemy. Yeah. It's dinner time. Maybe I shouldn't call. No, he's a priest. He's there to help. Please call. Is there a problem, Mrs. Love? Perhaps I can help. No, the only one who can help is Father O'Connor. I will. I'll call him. Perhaps this is something you should discuss with Mr. Love. No, Gomez. You've got to know how I felt about Reginald and Vince before the accident. Well, I'm sure Mr. Love would tell you anything you wanted to know. The one who really knows is Father O'Connor because he heard my confession. Hello. Um, this is Mary McKinnon. Is Father O'Connor there? Do you know when Father O'Connor will be back? Oh, I see. Yes, yes, I would. Um, please ask him to call me. That's Mary McKinnon. And ask him to call as soon as he gets in. I don't care how late it is. I just really have to talk to him. Thank you. Don't worry, I'll call back. Will you be asking Father O'Connor to come here? Yes, Gomez. Oh, then I'm sure Mr. Love would want to be with you for support. This is between Father O'Connor and me. This is a very personal matter. What will you tell Mr. Love? It isn't necessary to tell Mr. Love anything, Gomez. But, Senora... Gomez, Gomez nobody best. even knows where Father O'Connor is or when he will be back. This is not something that we have to worry about right now. Okay? Very well, Senora. Thank you, Gomez. Senora... If you... If there's anything I can do... Nothing. Thank you, Gomez. Sometimes that woman can drive you crazy. Obviously. Look, um, why don't we go look at your costume for the Halloween party? Oh, Brittany. I don't feel in the mood for a party right now. I was just thinking maybe it would take your mind off anything. None of my children are going to be here. That must be tough. I feel very far away from them. Well, look, they'll get close to you again. You're the only mother they have, right? Yeah. Actually, Kathleen and Cheryl really have tried to reach out to me. See, there you go. That's a start. It's good. I have no contact whatsoever with MJ. Well, maybe she just needs a little time. Maybe she's had too much time. Maybe I should do something about that. Break the silence. If today's going to be my day to get answers, I might as well start with MJ. You have got rocks for brains. You yeah. know that. And I told you that I can fight my own battles. What's really bugging you, MJ? Is it this assignment? Or is it something else? Excuse me, I hope I'm not interrupting. No, Adam and I were just finishing what we had. Yeah, right. I hoped we could talk. Well, I don't have a lot of time. It won't take long. I'm looking, Jim, and I think I gotta go. Don't. I have so many questions to ask you. Questions about what? Everything. You. And, and your job. 
and restaurant, and most of all, if you will ever accept me. You should know that in my book, Pops comes first. I really don't think this is the time. MJ, I am so sorry. I know those are just words, and they're not much comfort after everything that's happened. This has been really difficult for Pa. This may be hard for you to believe, but I care about Vince. I don't remember our life together, but I can certainly understand what he's going through now, and I feel terrible about it. Yeah. Well, I guess there's not much any of us can do to change history. I guess when you look at me, all you see is an adulterous woman who abandoned you. I never said that. No. Very polite. But the point is, I'm here now. And I want to get reacquainted with my children. And I know it's not going to be easy. And it's natural that there would be resentment. I just think it's going to take a little time, that's all. Yes, it is. Do you know if Kathleen has sent out her wedding invitations yet? Yeah. I spoke to Kathleen, Kathleen about that. I thought maybe I could give her a bridal shot. Well, like I said, you have to talk to Kathleen. MJ, I'm determined to be a part of your life, no matter what it takes. Fine. As long as you realize that I am going to stick by Pops no matter what. I'm not going to hurt him. I swear to you. Don't you think it's a little late for that? MJ, don't shut me out, please. Too many years have been lost already. Do you have any idea what it was like growing up without a mother? Well, it was terrible. <laughs> it was, uh, strange. Sad sometimes. Pops had to be both father and mother to us. I mean, he was the one who braided his hair every morning. He took us shopping for school shoes. He was the one who had breakfast ready every morning when we came downstairs, rain or shine. He signed our report cards with the PTA meeting for the other mothers. We didn't have very much money, but what we did have, Pop saved for our clothes, our tuition. He never bought himself anything, ever. The only time he got anything new was at Christmas or Thanksgiving, and we would, we'd save our allowances and get him something. Sarah bought him some bobby pins for Christmas one year. <laughs> you love him a lot, don't you? Yes. You know, all that time, he never had to think of me as anything other than a saint. Don't be. Don't be. I think. Vince did a fine job. He raised a wonderful young woman. <laughs>